great science fiction movie. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So. Stand by. Okay. I think uh, Terminator. Terminator was uh, was made for our catering budget Steve. on Titanic. Jim, what is there about? I can't think of another word for it. The romance of this mm -hmm. tragedy mm -hmm. that has fascinated so many people. That's interesting that you use the word romance because I've actually said that, and of course it's in the it's in the darker, almost sort of more operatic use of the of the tragic use of the of the term. But you know, the 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 heart the heart wrench of literally hundreds and hundreds of women separated from their from their husbands having to get into lifeboats see them on the deck for the last time as they're being lowered away into the darkness you know i think that's one of the enduring images of of the real titanic story and so you know i thought if i if i make that as the as the backdrop to a love story albeit a fictional love story uh, you know how much more of a turbocharged experience of sort of of passion and heartbreak that might be. I mean, that was my initial sort of gut feeling that drew me to the to the arena of Titanic, of doing a love story on the Titanic. Now, you bring out in the film the fact that this was uh, quite a scandal in its day because there was some talk that the Titanic sank because White Star shipping was in this race to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. make faster, ever faster crossings sure. across the Atlantic. Sure. Uh, do you see that as part well, of the legend? Yeah, no, I, I think I think it's I think it's historically accurate. I mean, this whole film was very, very in, in, in intensely uh, uh, researched. Uh, what you'll uh, what you'll find with Titanic is everybody's got their own opinions of what uh, w what were the factors. You know, there's no there's no kind of absolute history. There's only there's only subjective history. I think that it was very much a factor that the Cunard Line and the White Star Line were like the Coke and Pepsi of their time, and they were constantly trying to one up each other. And it translated into dollars. It translated into bottom line business. Very much the sort of you know corporate motivations that we might have right now today in 97 and will continue to have endlessly as long as people are still people um, you know and so here were these guys making making decisions playing with the, with the lives of, of the people in their in their trust you know very much in the same way that, that uh, let's say an airline company has to make decisions about you know maintenance schedules and parts replacement and they are taking responsibility for the people on their aircraft and yet profit is profit is the other side of that equation you know there's so much of that in our lives in, in, a, in a technological world where we put our our lives in in, uh, in, in the care of other people in a, in, a, in a technical medium you know I think it was uh, Truffaut said one time that we won't accept as moviegoers uh, grand passions from mm -hmm. contemporary characters. Mm -hmm. If you're going to tell a story about grand passions, mm -hmm. it has to be a period film. Mm -hmm. uh, what was there about your two romantic leads that made you think they are capable of expressing these passions? Uh, well. Uh, I pray. I cross my fingers. I know that they're very good actors. I see them. I, I, I ask to see them work and, and do some scenes for me before, uh, you know, before I actually make the final decision. Although the scenes that I asked them to read were more of the getting to know you scenes than the than the big stuff, because I don't know. I, I felt that that was ultimately the harder thing to do than the big passionate moments because I think uh, uh, the part that the audience might believe less is the getting to know you, what's the initial attraction, what's the initial spark, and to make that believable and not feel too hurried or too sort of, you know, Hollywood um, artificial. Um, I put my faith in actors. I put my faith in good actors to be able to get to that emotional place and, and, and let it come pouring out. Finally, what is there about DiCaprio? What is there about Leo? What is what, who is this Leo guy? You know, yeah. why is he so great? You know, it's 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 amazing. Leo Leo's got everything it takes and more to be the one of the biggest, if not the biggest, stars in the in the in the world. And it's a combination of of uh, of the the looks, the charm, the uniqueness. Because any great star has to be in some way unique, um, and just solid, solid acting capability. I mean, he's just really so good. And I think Kate has that as well. I mean, I think Kate's a little further behind the curve than, than Leo is in stardom because she hasn't done enough mainstream mm -hmm. stuff yet, but maybe Titanic will turn that around a little uh, bit. I have no doubt. 
Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks. That was a good interview, Thank by you. the way.